Hey, everybody. Happy Thursday. Welcome back to the podcast daily. A very, very special episode. And it's we know it's going to be a great Thursday uh, for us because we get to spend some of it with our friend Kyle Rowland of the Toledo Blade. Uh, That's Bill Landis. I'm Austin Ward getting ready for uh, Saturday night in the horseshoe with the in-state Mac. um, I don't know. Favorites are they? Powerhouse? Uh, How would we describe them, Kyle? Uh, neither of those, uh, in recent years have been underachiever. Uh, so, uh, I, I guess you could say that, but they, they think they got a pretty good team this year. Um, perhaps they'll learn something Saturday, but maybe not. We'll see. Well, before we started, you were adamant that Toledo was going to come down <laughs> a couple hours South and shock the world in the horseshoe. That's, that's what you said. Don't, don't change your tune now. Not, no, 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 not true. No, there, there's a reason it's been 101 years since uh, an Ohio team has beat Ohio State. Okay. Well, I did make that up. Um, what what should we expect from this Toledo team? Bill's been uh, raving about the number four ranked total defense in the country. Are they number four in total defense or what is it, Bill? Uh, they're number four in, I think, yeah, total defense, yards per game. Number okay. two in uh, scoring defense. So. That's right. Powerhouse. Yeah. So what does that mean, Kyle? How are they doing it? Well, obviously, I mean, Long Island and UMass are not uh, blue blood uh, programs. <laughs> that said, Toledo's defense is is good. Um, it's been top 35 the last two years. There's a lot of hype coming into the season about how good it would be. Um, th- th- it seems like their D-line, which has depth and talent, and NFL draft picks, which is a rarity in the Mac, um, would be like, you know, maybe like the fourth or fifth best in the Big Ten. Um, That's pretty good. Uh, But Ohio State still kind of torments defenses. uh, They're, you know, the fourth and fifth best in the Big Ten. Um, So so I don't think that means they're going to come into Ohio Stadium and and slow down Ohio State. You know, for a half, I do think they can be competitive. I don't think they can do it over 60 minutes. Um, Deswan Johnson, defensive tackle, really solid player. He's probably the best NFL prospect on Toledo. Um, he'll probably have some tackles for a loss, and he might get after C.J. Stroud here and there. Um, Judge Culpepper is a Penn State transfer, really solid guy. Um, uh, Jamal Hines, an edge rusher, is another guy who's going to get drafted in April. Um, so they, they have bodies and they have guys, but they just don't have uh, – near the depth that you need to, to kind of hang with an Ohio State. And Ohio State is just so high-powered on offense. I mean, one of the huge reasons uh, uh, Toledo almost beat Notre Dame last year is you just saw – I mean, Notre Dame's offense is not, you know, some elite unit. Um, <laughs> last year – I mean, one of the big themes in that game last year was Ohio – or Toledo had 11 tackles for a loss and six sacks – against Notre Dame. I mean, that is just like absurd. Yeah. Um, so they, they definitely have a, a competent defense. Is, is this the best defense that Ohio State will have played so far this year? <laughs> like I only asked that half in jest sort of based off what we know so far this season. Is it possible this is the best defense they've seen? Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of been a joke amongst Toledo writers as well this week. Um, but I I mean, I would say Notre Dame's defense is better. Um, but I do think people will probably be surprised at, at how good Toledo's defense is. Um, I don't really see this being – I mean, the spread is 31. Um, but I don't, I don't think this is going to be Akron or Miami or Bowling Green of recent years where it's just a wire-to-wire – total woodshed game. Uh, and if that does happen, I think that's concerning for Toledo, regardless of how good Ohio State is. Well, it's interesting that you bring that up because I, you know, we've talked a lot this week about Ohio State's offensive line and, you know, they, they haven't really had their best full game yet. We saw that in the fourth quarter where they really beat down on Notre Dame and pulled away. And if they had had more time, then they were never going to stop running it down Notre Dame's throat at this point. So, but that wasn't quite the same. There was a little bit more uh, for the passing attack. And uh, Bill's uh, talked and written about several times throughout this week. It just it felt a little wonky or out of sync for Ohio State uh, to run the ball. So if Toledo is able to you know, do that with those guys that you mentioned on the f- defensive front, 
Dallas Gant can maybe fill, make some plays, a name that's obviously well-known in the horseshoe. That could make this a more interesting matchup. But I think what you're describing is that if they if Toledo is able to keep the score slightly down, well, there's still another side of the football, and that might be where there could be other issues for the Rockets. Absolutely. Um, offensively, I mean, that, that, that what used to be Toledo's calling card. It's kind of weird. They've done like a total 180 in these last few years. Um, when Jason Candle was the offensive coordinator when, and Matt Campbell was the head coach, I mean, they just put up insane numbers. Like, you know, some of the best in college football consistently. It was like that the first couple of years, Candle was the head coach. And then these last few years, they've kind of lost their way. Part of that has been injuries at quarterback. And they just haven't been able to find that guy who can consistently complete passes. Um, the offensive line has not been very good the last few years. Their pass rush in, or their pass uh, blocking in particular isn't outstanding. I think that's where Ohio State could feast on Saturday. Um, but Daquan Finn, the quarterback, is a true dual threat guy. He's actually the team's leading rusher right now, which is probably not the greatest sign in the world. Um, but but he, I mean, he can escape guys. I mean, he's he's elusive. I don't know what he'll be like against four and five star defensive guys. Um, but he did have the the go ahead twenty nine yard touchdown. I think it was last year uh, in the Notre Dame game. Um, so he has done it against good players before. Um, but I just. I don't know. It's hard to see their offense doing the kind of consistent things they need to do uh, against an Ohio State level uh, defense. Kyle, um, I, I want to flip back to the defense for a second because I'm I'm interested in Ohio State running the ball. As Austin said, we talked about that a lot. And if if Ohio State runs the ball successfully against Toledo, like if you just said that to somebody, be like, who cares? Like it's a MAC team, it's Toledo, <laughs> but. From what you're describing, like, and I, like, this seems like it's a pretty good front, like, or at the very least, the defensive front is the strength of this team. W- would it not mean like a little yeah. something if Ohio State can move the ball on the ground against Toledo? I think, like, in, and I'm not, I'm talking like in the way that we all want to see it happen, just like a dominant rushing performance that we've kind of been waiting for, like a, a total game that looks like the fourth quarter of the Notre Dame game. If Ohio State decides it wants to play that way on Saturday, in your mind, if that is accomplished, would that actually mean something given how stout Toledo is up front on defense? Yeah, no, I, I think it would it definitely mean something. And, and obviously, I mean, I still pay attention to Ohio State a, a fair amount. So, mm. I mean, what, one of the issues that Toledo had it, the first week in particular against Long Island was obviously a talent disparity with Toledo and Long Island. And usually you see it along the lines when there's a big mismatch. And Toledo's O-line just didn't bully Long Island at all. They weren't pushing them off the ball. They weren't running for five, six, seven yards a carry. And that's something where if Ohio State is to do that against Toledo, it would be a really good sign for, for Justin Fry and that offensive line. Um, Toledo's got big bodies. They've got skilled guys. Um, I mean, Judge Culpepper, one guy I mentioned, was a Big Ten guy at Penn State. Uh, so I, I think for sure, I mean, it, it, it's it's hard for an Ohio State fan, I think, psychologically to be like, oh, man, I'm really proud of the Buckeyes. They ran for <laughs> five and a half yards against Toledo. Um, but but if that's the case, you know, Saturday night at 1130 p.m., I, I think you should be happy. Uh, for those who don't remember, Kyle uh, has a lot of experience in the past covering the Buckeyes. And unfortunately, we don't get to see him. It's not his decision in the press box in the horseshoe very often uh, with with what you are doing now, Kyle, and when you are around Toledo, what is the difference between covering that program and the one that you used to? Yeah, so good question. I mean, access is, is obviously, I guess, the biggest. Um, so I cover Toledo football and basketball. And I mean, I talk to the coaches almost every day on the phone, which isn't <laughs> exactly the case at Ohio State. No, um, really? <laughs> so, I mean, that, that stuff's good. I mean, any story idea you have, you can basically do, for instance, for the Toledo-Buffalo game later this year, I'm actually writing in the 
football equipment truck uh, and kind of writing about that whole process. But you chose um, to do that? But, uh, <laughs> I did. I did. It, it'll be an interesting thing. Hopefully the weather's good. I don't, don't want a <laughs> snowstorm in Buffalo. But uh, so, I mean, that's kind of the biggest thing. Um, you, I feel like you know the coaches on a different level here. Um, may, maybe even get to know the players a little better. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, I don't know, it's all the same. You, you got to have kind of content to write about. You write for the fans. I mean, we're lucky that, I mean, people in Toledo care about the university of Toledo. Um, so there, there's definitely an audience. Like it doesn't feel like you're just writing to write, like you're, <laughs> you're still, you know, have a fan base. What, uh, we were talking with Ryan day on Tuesday. Um, and he was asked about his relationship with Jason Candle, the head coach at Toledo, for anybody who doesn't know. Um, like, he tried to leave, right? Like, what, what, what do people think of Jason Candle in Toledo? And, like, is there any residual effect, I guess, of him nearly leaving the program for what was not a head coaching job? Yeah. So, yeah, it was an interesting time for sure. Um he, so the, my Miami, Florida offensive coordinator job is what you're referencing, which I think is a really good job because I think mm -hmm. Mario Cristobal is a good coach. I think that program's on the upswing. They have a really, really good quarterback right now. Um, so I think that would have been not a bad move for Jason Candle. Um, he has a very low approval rating among fans right now. Um, Toledo's got a pretty, pretty rabid fan base. I mean, I think most schools – it is kind of that way, but I mean, read a Toledo message board. I know that that's not like the end all be all of things, but like reading a Toledo message board is not that different than reading an Ohio state message board. Like oh boy. they're, they're into it. They're, they're crazy. So, um, and if you look at his record, you know, since 2017, when they went to the Mac title game, it's been vast underachievement. Uh, they've not won more than seven games in a season. They've not won the division and been back to the conference championship game. Um, and I mean, Toledo is a very proud program. They think of themselves as the best program in the Mac. Uh, they've had the number one recruiting class five out of the last six years and the results just haven't come on the field. And Oh, by the way, he's being paid $1.2 million a season. Um, so that has, has definitely, uh, got people chirping. <laughs> that that'll do it, especially at that level. I'd like to compare a lot of the Mac message boards though. Like is Toledo I, I didn't the, even the know most... Mac message boards existed. <laughs> neither, neither did I. It's a whole new thing to me, but it's <laughs> it's interesting. And, and then they'll talk about me and Briggs' stories on there, and they'll get mad at us about stuff, and it's, <laughs> it's, it's interesting sometimes. So so what's your burner account then, Kyle? You got to go defend uh, the, actually, go defend I the blade. I have a name on there. I have a name on there, and it's just my name, but I've never posted. So <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, what is the best beer to drink on the road? Hmm. I mean, Mick Ultra, Bud Light. Uh, <laughs> Those are the best. Are, are, are we? Are you setting me up to say that, or are you asking me like for Mac road trips? What's the I was best? just I was just wondering what you were going to say because <laughs> you you like to give me grief for our version of road beers, and I know that you will try craft beer and you like to, but then you'll also just suddenly appear somewhere and send me a picture of a bucket of Bud Lights. And <laughs> I don't... You, you might be jealous. Uh, next week, Toledo at San Diego State. I will be at... Mm. Uh, oh, yeah. It's going to be fun. It's good. I'm going out early to do some golfing. I uh, will be at Coronado Brewing next Friday. So Okay. Might, okay. <laughs> All right. You better bring some back then. That's the only way yeah. this will work. We or we can just IPA. or we can trade and you can cover the Wisconsin game and I'll go we'll just it'll be trading places for a week. It'll be fun. Like we get to see see each other's beats for a day and, and see how the other half lives. <laughs> Deal? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh well, I was had, close. I had to try. I was halfway there. Um, I don't think maybe maybe if there. Ohio State was playing at Rutgers, because I mean, the Piscataway is just, I mean, that's as good as it gets. Beautiful destination, but they do have stuff your face there. So that's true. You know, sometimes you can win even when you lose, um, which is what I consider going to New Jersey. Anyway, um, wow. <laughs> sorry, New Jersey. Sorry, Luke Whipler. Um, Kyle has many other things that he has to do. He's been on 
every podcast and every radio station in Columbus this week. So we're going to uh, cut our time with him at this point. We will be glad to see him and Briggs uh, back down here. I assume unless Briggs was Briggs going to be with you. He won't be there. Okay. We get, have them both back in there. We'll have a great party. Oh, man. That means show. I won't be the tallest guy in the press box. <laughs> we're going to stay be, home. We're going to be able to field a basketball team again. <laughs> uh, and it'll be great uh, to see you all. And we, Certainly appreciate your time. That's Kyle Rowland of the Toledo Blade. This has been the podcast daily for Thursday. A lot more coverage of Ohio State and Toledo coming. Uh, Kickoff is fast approaching, getting ready for that. A prime time banger between the Rockets and the Buckeyes. For Bill, I'm Austin Ward. We will see you tomorrow.